What is going on, everybody? In in this video, we're providing a state of the market in stock picks for March 29th, 2023. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, consider subscribing as we do provide daily and weekly updates to get you prepared for the day and the week ahead in this glorious market. So what a interesting day. As you can see, we've had a lot of ups and downs. We essentially had... Um, FDIC uh, chair come on today. Uh, a lot of the information he's providing, again, is much along the lines of what's come out from Yellen and what's come out from Powell. Again, they're all kind of just playing on the same stage, uh, trying to have the same front as everything is uh, strong and everything is resilient. And I don't know how many times I have heard that uh, throughout the past uh, week and a half. <laughs> It's absolutely absurd. And the reason uh, this happens is because, again, they're not trying to draw a panic uh, and trying to buy themselves time into what is happening right before us. Uh, now, a lot of the different things I've already talked about, um, there's no point going over those things. Uh, there isn't really a lot of news between uh, for the next uh, couple of weeks anyway. We're going to get some more data. We're going to get some more um other information. Our next monetary policy is until June. I think we're going to have an emergency uh, rate uh, pause or cut uh, before then. In my opinion. I think there's a there's a lot that's going on. That is a lot that's unfolding that we are not seeing. Uh, the reason that things are very quiet is very eerie, in my opinion, uh, because of of potential collapse and all the really all you're really getting is. Uh, sound and resilient is all you're hearing uh what should be concerning nonetheless we will see uh, at this point uh things aren't sound things aren't uh resilient uh there are backstops in place uh money is continuing to be pulled out to, for these backstops uh as banks are trying to adjust for um i don't know if a lot of these banks uh essentially swapped a lot of their uh, assets uh, to market that a lot of these banks would be hugely underwater, uh, but you won't see that. And so uh, being said, uh, because of policies put in place, obviously, um, just the way the way the banking system is set up, um, there's policies put in place only for them to be broken, because that's pretty much what we do when stuff starts going uh, haywire. Uh, we just bail them out and nobody learns anything and so now there's just the talks and ideas of um these bank ceos if they get a failed bank that they're not allowed to uh, become the ceo of another company or get bailouts to get these uh, amazing severance packages which pay millions of dollars uh, to go to work at another bank uh that they are trying to stop that again question is is how will that actually happen follow-up is extremely important we hear a lot of talk and nothing actually happens uh, so now we see. Uh, again, there isn't enough funds to keep backing people out unless they create another tool to leverage the tool that they already have uh, to keep um, bailing themselves out. Uh, that is the only way they're going to get themselves out of the situation. Uh, so as of right now, we will wait and see what happens. Uh, but uh, there is, again, no real big events going on this week. Uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks, we are getting ready for earnings mode. That will kick off in the beginning in about two weeks or so. Uh, in middle of April, we will start getting bank earnings, and that is going to be very uh, interesting. Again, all big news is trying to be held into the weekend if uh, possible. Again, they are trying to contain uh, the fear. So to be able to do that, some big news is being released, uh, primarily bank news towards uh, the back half of the week so they can take it into the weekend and address it and hopefully not cause any more panic. Uh, again, something I've talked about, earnings is going to be much the same. You're going to get bank earnings more likely on a Friday, Monday. Uh, that way they can take whatever is being exposed and bring that into the weekend and try to address it. Uh, and then we'll see what happens and we'll see what big tech. I'm not expecting great results uh, from any of these companies coming into this Q1. Uh, it's going to get worse in Q2. Uh, Q2, I think we'll realize that we're actually in a recession or have been in a recession uh, if you don't realize that now. Uh, the fact that everything is essentially either one getting put on credit cards. Uh, there's a lot of um, debt that's being defaulted on, whether that's auto loans, home loans, uh, 
uh, credit cards, whatever the case is, any debt that's out there, uh, just the historical pace in which debt is increasing, uh, you know, buy now, pay later is, is seeing a huge influx as well, uh, which is not a good sign. Uh, something I talked about previous and how that though those particular things would uh, could have excelled in this market. But the problem is, is when you don't have work, uh, you're not getting paid back. So you're going to default again. So that is a huge concern uh, and risk that these uh, companies have taken on. So again we are seeing more layoffs amazon is another big one they are releasing more layoffs this week uh the continued layoffs are going to continue to happen and you know something i talked about how uh the bonds are trying to price in rate cuts i think that's the bonds are telling us uh, or tipping their hand as to what's to come and understand that um there is there's just way too many bad things the, the fed now are projecting to increase rates um the probability of uh, to another 25 point basis move is increasing uh we'll have to see when the next uh inflation report comes out uh, but ultimately right now things are just not looking pretty things are looking horribly bad and continue to get bad uh and um, we need something bigger to break right like the pal is not going to start cutting rates uh until things get worse and if you didn't pause over this last couple bank incidences, that means things are just going to get worse. In the long, longer and prolonged, you've extend this time period out with higher rates. Uh, you're 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 just waiting for another bank to crumble or several banks to crumble at this point because you've increased it by another twenty five percent. And so now they're trying to adjust policy and change all the rules that they had in, in place uh, so that these banks get more time. Uh, and that's the problem is if you give them an inch, they take a mile. So uh, that, that's what we're dealing with. That's what we dealt back in 2008 uh, and many other uh, crashes as well. So that's pretty much what we're looking for here. Uh, you can't time this in the, in the pivot that people think this is going to happen. You know, I'm not a doom and gloomer and I want to point that out. And I try to stipulate that all the time. I am very much a permable, uh, but there even being a permeable you have to realize that there are natural cycles that have to occur you need recession you can't just keep going up uh, because that uh, it causes a lot more damage uh, you need things to normalize or things get uh, absurd uh, get inflated to absurd amounts where no one can afford anything and so you need a realization you need down cycles like this uh, to stabilize and kill demand and um you know, normalize uh, these markets so that they're not over expensive, so people can actually afford these things, uh, and not just uh, the individual, right? The individual, it's on the individual basis on who can afford what, but ultimately, uh, in the in the general sense, everybody living for this quote unquote American dream uh, would like to eventually purchase a house or purchase a car, or whatever the case is, uh, whatever they whatever they feel is deemed to be a, a good successful life. Uh, you need to stabilize those markets because they can get carried away. And we saw that over the pandemic over the past uh, about a year ago when we hit the top of the market and how crazy and price gouging people were getting uh, for their homes, for anything that they owned. And now they're reali and the realization kicked in that you can't charge, but nobody's going to buy. And so um, these numbers, these inflated numbers have to come down. They have to adjust. It's part of the cycle and the cycle is not pretty there's nothing nice about it a lot of people get laid off a lot of people drain savings accounts a lot of people drain a lot of different uh assets and uh, assets and uh, that they've acquired uh just to stay afloat and that's what we're seeing and so nonetheless um this isn't as worse as it can get right this is just normal cycle that we're going through and so um we need something bigger about it to break. And so if that's a couple banks, a couple banks, uh, you know, losing, if it's, if again, if it's only, if they have 150 million and only 250,000 uh, is covered, uh, then that, uh, that difference is, is going to be lost. Right. And that kills that caused disinflation, right? Like that money is, is lost and nobody gets it. Right. And so, uh, that's the problem. Uh, that a lot of depositors, especially from uh, SVB, uh, found themselves in and why they had to get bailed out by the bank, because they were also the same people that uh, that backed a lot of these um, these politicians. Again, I'm not political, nor do I try to be. 
uh, but this is just uh, uh, an observation, if you will, on what is currently going on and what happens all the time. And so with that being said, uh, we continue on to tomorrow and we see what happens. Again, there's going to be a lot of data in my mind. Um, none of that stuff matters. In my opinion, yes, it's going to move markets. Yes, is it a monetary policy? If it's not, it's really not going to do much. It's not going to change the direction of the market. Is it coming from Powell? No, then it's not going to change the direction of the market. Uh, it's all intraday moves. All right. The market is still undecided because uh, Powell is undecided uh, because he is waiting for something bigger to happen. He needs more banks to go under. He needs a lot of this uh, money that is not insured these banks to fail. So it causes, it causes disinflation, causes layoffs. Again, now there's nothing pretty about the cycle, but it needs to happen. And it's not even close to that extent to where he's starting to even pause. So keep that in mind. And something I've said, even before this whole bank crisis started, you need a huge event for them to start cutting prices. And we aren't close to that. So being said, let's look at some technicals now that I've uh, I've kind of just uh, wandered off there. Hopefully I didn't lose you and kind of get on a tangent. Um, but again, I, I create this channel so I can offload what my thoughts and ideas are and uh, and kind of give me a, a soundboard onto what I think is currently going on. So SPX, again, it's a lot of grinding. Try to sell off today, but again, pick back up and right back essentially almost to open today. Uh, so it's pretty crazy on how this is playing out. Let me actually throw this up on the daily. Uh, take the studies off here, uh, remove studies, and we can get a little bit clearer picture of what's going on here. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if we try to get push back up and re-tag uh, the 40-40 mark, uh, but more than likely, again, we're still just waiting on news. The market's just going to hover. It's not going to do anything until perhaps earnings, and earnings are still two weeks out. Uh, even besides that, um, what we're going to have to see. I have to see what goes from here. But right now, um, your target is either 440. If the market wants to open below uh, the, the 3940, uh, then you're really aiming for roughly that uh, 3850 mark. It's kind of what you're aiming for there. So you're playing between these two zones. It's been nasty and grinding. Uh, and these it's just been getting tighter and tighter, uh, which is uh, on the good side I don't like. Uh, the dollar, again, I don't really want to go over the dollar. There's no reason to go over the dollar if this banking crisis plays out like the way I think it's going to. The dollar is just going to sink anyway. It's not going to matter, right? You're going to get uh, tons of uh, disinflation if you start losing tons of money. So uh, that's going to kill everything and everything pretty much sell off from that point. Uh, at least that's the way I perceive it. Um, Bitcoin, again, true test is the decoupling. Is this the decoupling of Bitcoin? Again, the having you still got a long time before having. So for me to think that um, Bitcoin is going to start running now, I think is way premature for that to happen. I could. It's always a chance I could be wrong, right? But in my opinion, I don't think it's going to. It's going. It's going to run like people think it's going to. I don't think the decoupling is going to happen now. I think it's again way too premature for that to happen. Uh, nothing is broken in, in the banking system, so just keep that. It's broken, but not as bad, right? It's still being recovered. When we start getting 50, 60 banks, if this thing can hold up after 50 or 60 banks go under, then that's different. That's a, that's a true decoupling, right? When everything else starts selling heavily and Bitcoin's going to run on its own, uh, that that will be the decoupling. And I don't think it's, it's still premature to, to claim that as of right now. Uh, Tesla, again, it's chopped nasty here. We are starting to get an earnings mode here fairly shortly here. So looking more towards probably the back half of April for Tesla. Uh, and then that's what probably when we'll get earnings. Uh, this is probably what this is for. Yeah, they're projecting it to be on the 19th of April. Uh, so we'll see. This could potentially start getting an earnings mode. I was kind of hoping this thing would at least dip back down to 170 before then. Something happens again. This thing can change dramatically. Otherwise, you want this thing to break out over uh, the 200, and then it's got the 220, really hard ceiling at 220. So you are really too close to that 220. Started to get some selling today, but um, tech started looking pretty weak today. Just uh, aside from everything, but still holding. Um, again, people are trying to time a pivot. Every time we try to time a pivot, we get absolutely wrecked. So again, not financial advice. Uh, do what you will, but. Um, tech is way too high so when there's a change when 
the banks have been selling off. People have been safe havening the big tech. And when big tech is selling off, they safe haven back to the banks when the banks are in crisis. And so um, I don't know. I just think that is a huge risk to be putting uh, investing in banks right now. Uh, especially with what's coming. Um, there's a reason why they say it, tell you every other hour on the hour uh, that banks are strong and resilient. Uh, again, try not to, um, they're trying not to panic themselves, in my opinion. Uh, BA, again, massive rip today. Uh, still playing between zones. We'll see. Again, it needs to break out over the 208 uh, to continue. Uh, if you want it to break down, it needs to break below the 195 and actually open below that and start selling. Again, it has a lot of strong support. So BA, um, even if it does start to sell off, it will be a slow grind down. Uh, JPM still very, very strong. I think it still needs to at least reclaim at least down to the 116, in my opinion. Uh, but we'll see what happens with all the massive influx of money that have been that's been coming in. Um, maybe different. This earnings might actually do very well uh, just because of that. Uh, so we'll have to see. But um, and again, normally they lead with JPM as far as earnings is concerned, and then they uh, kind of drift off of the rest of them. So uh, we'll see what happens there. GS again, it's been wrecked pretty hard, and again, a lot of it's come from comments from the CEO. Uh, same with Bank of America, uh, but its, it's technical levels have been broken and kind of a look uh, look much better priced than what it did. But again, the problem being is if something else happens and we start getting panic and selling, uh, that doesn't mean that these things can't sell more. But at, at a normal price, uh, they're a good price because they've sold off. Like I said, they've retraced uh, some bigger moves. So that's kind of what I've been looking for is uh, these to have. Uh, some retracement here. This thing could still drop quite a bit. This is a lower low, so just keep mindful of that. It may do one more last retest. I typically, and that is something you typically see on any kind of big move, uh, is you'll get a break and you'll get li liquidity. You'll get one more break up for massive liquidity, and then th that's when the drop happens. And so you got to be really careful. That's what the that bank looks like anyway. Golden Sachs. Um, this has been pretty choppy nonetheless, but uh, same kind of play potentially here, hoping for a, a bigger push down and a larger push up before the last bit of liquidity is drawn and then the sell off. So kind of looking for that there, but we'll see. Again, I don't want to make this video too long because there's not tons of new news. Again, we are waiting for a bigger event. The market is waiting. The market needs uh, security in one fashion or another. If it doesn't, if it doesn't hear anything, it'll take that as good news and start pushing up. So keep that in mind. And we are right around the corner from earnings mode. Uh, the market will get in its earnings cycle uh, whenever it can, especially over the past year. Uh, whenever it had the opportunity, it would push up uh, if there was no big events. Right now, we don't have any really big big events till June. We still have the core CPI, which will be a big event. Uh, but aside, I'm talking about pivotal events. I'm not just talking about random events. Uh, today could have gone either way. Uh, but there really wasn't much uh, more information coming from the FDIC, um, um, FDIC chair. Uh, there was some good information originally, but uh, it's not enough to scare the market. Uh, and I think we, you'll have to see those on our earnings report for that to really sink in. So that kind of gives some of these reports and stuff from people, certain people are talking. You need to listen because those are kind of your key insights into what's going to happen next. Uh, kind of like on FDX uh, had that massive crater day a couple months back. I think it was like a July or September, October, something like that. It had a huge uh, for Q3, uh, essentially talking about Q2 earnings. Uh, it was right around high inflation time period and everything, uh, those results. And so they had a huge, they just dived huge. That was our warning shot coming into a lot of other things. Uh, but the market really didn't want to listen. But if you can listen and pay attention to those things, those are the things that give you key insights into what the next move is, uh, not what people are saying or doing uh, on the news outlets, or media outlets, whatever the case is. So, But with that being said, if you made this far, I do appreciate you. Go ahead and drop a thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.